Hey YouTube, it's the GC Weapon back again. Very quickly today, I will swap the motor in this Trackmaster Molly. I've run the motor in with this device that I made. All it is is a battery and two alligator clips to run the motor under load. And I did that for about two hours till the battery was flat. So that's all ready to go. Now I'm going to work very quickly, so try and keep up. I'm already heating up the soldering iron. So first battery cover off, battery out. And we need our special screwdriver. Just a minute. Alright. Sorry about that. Bit of time wasting. But my screwdriver set, which has the special bit that we need. And it's this bit here. That's not it. What are you doing? This one. Can you see it? Is it going to focus? Yeah, triangle. Alright, so we'll pop this apart. Now if you saw my review of this locomotive yesterday, you'll know that it sounds shocking and is very slow. So I'm going to do this quick mod and you'll learn how to do it too. So these four screws out with your special screwdriver. You can get these on eBay. It's called either a TriStar or a Triangle Security Screwdriver. This is a very good mod to do. This last screw is being stubborn. There we go. Alright, so... Coupling will fall out, put them aside, put that aside, you're left with this part. And the wheels are just popping off, put those aside as well, reinstall those later. So we have the chassis and the drive unit and the rear wheels left. So the chassis we will unscrew from the drive unit with this screw at the back here. Now when you're unscrewing plastic you want to be careful not to strip the screws because then it will be destroyed. So we'll put this aside and that aside because we're working with this now. Get this screw out as well. No, it doesn't want to come out. That can stay in there. So to take the drive unit apart, you've got one screw here, one screw here, and one screw on the back. Now make sure this is switched to the off position. We'll start with the two front screws. Put that aside. Put that aside and then we flip it over. The reason why we flip it over is because the screw is here on the switch and we'll unscrew it with the switch against the table so the screw will pop out and the switch assembly will remove as a whole and put it aside and we'll get our screw out put it with the other screws because they're all the same Alright, so we flip it back over to the side with the two holes and we lift this first section away. There's three sections. Alright, section one. Section two holds the motor. Alright, you see it? See how it's soldered here and here? What we're going to do is get our Sharpie and we're going to mark on the frame where 
the motor goes for the tabs. So about there and there. Makes it easy when we're soldering in the new motor. And hopefully by this time our soldering iron is nice and hot. Just gonna get my multi-tool here to use the pliers to pry off the gear. I might use the scissor blade if it'll let me. Or I might need my pocket knife. Just a sec. Alright, so we've got the pocket knife. We want to pry this gear off gently because we need the gear. And it doesn't slide off with too much trouble. Don't want to damage the gear because we want to fit it on the new motor shaft. So the gear is off. Sit it just there. Now if this gear came out when you took it apart that's okay because it just goes back in this hole. You see the hole next to this big gear? Spring down and in that hole. Right? So put all that aside and we're going to desolder the motor from the frame. And they've done a pretty sloppy job with this one. Looks like. Alright, so we just get our very hot soldering iron, which isn't as hot as I thought it was. Just heat up our solder there until it's like liquefied. It's taking a minute to get hot, which is not ideal. Hmm. Why won't it get hot? There we go. Right, so we'll separate that and that. And the other side. This side looks a bit more tricky. And it is. <laughs> because it's like sandwiched together but don't worry it'll solder up with the new motor very nicely this is usually a very good iron, I don't know why it's playing silly buggers today there we go so that is the old motor put our iron aside for a second while we fit the gear to the new motor and it goes with the tapered side first and it should slide on without too much fuss almost all the way with about that much gap. Alright. Fold the tabs down a little. And we're going to get some solder. Or solder. As you Americans will call it. Snip off a nice length. Any solder will do. Solder, solder. Now I'll tin up the terminals of the motor to make it nice and easy. So we'll just heat those, get a nice blob on there, 
and on the negative so there we go now we'll line up our marks that we drew with our sharpie for the tabs so right about there looks good to me I'm just going to press down with the iron until that melts it's not easy on camera So that's one side. And turn it around and do the other side. So there we go. It's a nice connection there. And it should all line up in the casing. So we can put the soldering iron back in its holder for now I think we're done with that so we take our base part of the drive unit and we put that gear back in that hole as I described before and you can just hold it in place with your thumb as we slide this part back in now this takes a bit of fiddling sometimes to seat correctly but there it goes. Alright. And it all turns. See? Sh should have no problem there. Let me get our top part of the case. And we make sure that this goes through this hole at the bottom here. Without it shooting off and having to go and hunt for it sometimes this part can be a pain as well but I found these drive units to be very easy to work on is it going to click does not want to but it doesn't matter because that's all together now see so we will hold that together tightly and screw it up oh there it goes so the first screw these are the ones that hold the case together so it's best to put these in first alright number two one with the switch so grab the whole unit as a switch again and what I like to do is I'll just lay the drive unit on top of it line up the hole if that'll work today yep good enough I think so Put our screw on. This is, of course, a magnetic screwdriver, which is handy. And then we'll screw that back down, not too tight because you can strip the thread. But yep, 
that's on. And let's give it the test. Wow. Something is very rattly. It is one of the gears, I suspect. I don't know why they do that. It's very annoying. So I'll just give it a nip up. Make sure it's all nice and tight. And then we'll get to the fun part, the test run. So we'll pop the drive unit back into its slot at the front here. You'll see underneath you can see the drive unit poking through that's where it goes then we can put in our screw here I always like to take this screw out I don't like it in there because the drive unit doesn't sit properly until it's out so there we go Now this is the main screw that holds the drive unit to the body. It takes a lot of load. So you want to make sure it's screwed in nice and tight, but do not strip the thread. Like I said, because then you'll have a broken train. So that's fairly tight. And pop on the wheels. This is a lazy, lazy, cheap design, if I'm honest. Right, so they appear to be the right way. And we'll hold those with our hand while we pop on this front coupling. And the rear coupling. And we'll fit this case. Which way does it go? Goes this way. Alright. So there you have it. One Molly upgrade. And these are the four triangle screws. I'm going to refit those for a factory look. So it looks like it hasn't been tampered with. One. Not the easiest screwdrivers to work with. Curse you, Trackmaster! Alright. So yeah, I might have to pull down this drive unit and move one of the gears along that sh long shaft because I think that's what causes that rattle is play in that shaft it can be tightened up but then you sort of lose a bit of performance if it's too tight if it's too loose it makes too much rattle but that can be for another day I think we've done pretty good from start to finish. 14 minutes. I could probably do it in 10 minutes if I wasn't on camera. But that's okay. And this screw is being a pain. I don't want to strip it. 
It doesn't want to go in. There we go. All right. Is this the battery we were using? Must be. Yep. That's ready for a test run. So hopefully now you can do it. Alright, so here we are out in the shed. Just done our Molly mod with a new motor in the drive unit. Hopefully you can use this video to refer to if you want to do a motor swap on a flat drive unit. It's all covered here in this video. So let's do this first run of the modded Molly UC weapon version. Off we go. going very nicely oh that's not good let me get that for you that happened because I came back out last night to do the cover photograph which I did not do while I was filming and I left coaches laying on the line. Molly's certainly going like a big engine should. I'm very happy with the result. Turned a pretty rubbish engine into an excellent engine. So what do you think? I think it's noisy, but runs very well. So I'm going to leave it there today. Thank you for watching my motor swap tutorial for Molly and other flat drive unit engines. Thanks for watching.